Hello and welcome back to the next video. Now we are taking our first big step into PLC programming by creating a new project in the TIA portal. This project will be the foundation of our program. Are you ready? Let's jump right in. Our goal is to create a program for our training system. When someone presses the green button, the PLC detects it through the input I0.0. At the same moment, the PLC activates output Q0.0, which is wired to our lamp. We will establish the connection between the input and the output through the PLC code. But before we can start programming, we first need to create a project. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you now in the TIA portal. Welcome my friends to your new second home, the TIA portal. When you open it for the first time, it should look like this. To create a new project, simply click here. Now you can assign a name and a storage path for your project. Let's call it my first project. After that, click on Create. The TA portal offers two views. The portal view for quick navigation and the project view for detailed work. I personally prefer working in the project view. Now we need to tell the TA portal which controller we are using. Please click on add new device in the project tree. Depending on your installed software, you might see different devices here. Don't worry if you have more or fewer options. It's perfectly normal. In our training system, we are working with a Symmetic S7-1200 controller. So please click on this folder. We are using a CPU 1212C ACD serial A with this article number. Make sure to select the exact same device in the TIA portal. Of course, if you are using a different CPU, you will need to pick the matching one instead. Here you have to select the right firmware version of your PLC. You can find your CPU's firmware version on its packaging or by creating an online connection, which I will show you later. For the S7-1500, you can check the version directly on its display. If you do not know the firmware version of your PLC, just select any version for now. The TA portal will inform you later if the selected version is not correct. Of course, you can also upgrade the firmware of a PLC, but this is a topic for another video. The description provides details like the CPU's work memory and available inputs and outputs. But don't worry if these terms are unfamiliar right now, that's totally fine. We will leave everything as it is and click on OK. Thank you so much for learning PLC programming with me. If you want to take your skills to the next level, visit my website. Join my full online course and start your journey as a PLC programmer. I would love to have you on board. If you are using tier version 17 or higher, the security wizard will now pop up. This tool helps protect your PLC from unwanted access like potential hacker attacks. However, security does not play a major role in our training system. I want to keep things super simple. For this reason, I'm disabling all security settings. The TA portal has now added the PLC to the project and there are many new options in the project tree. If you zoom in, you can also see the input and output addresses of your controller.
I hope you remember, we have connected our push button to input I0.0 and the lamp to the output Q0.0. These addresses can be changed if needed. But in our case, the default settings are perfectly fine. If you right click on the CPU, you can open the properties window. Here you can change the settings of your PLC. For beginners, the most important setting is the IP address. You can find it under the Profinet interface tab. The IP address identifies your PLC, allowing to communicate with other devices. Later, when we transfer the project to the PLC, this address will play an important role. We will leave the default settings, but be sure to remember the IP address for later. On the right side, you can see the hardware catalog. If you ever want to expand your PLC, you can select modules here and add them to your device view. In our case, we do not need any additional inputs and outputs. As mentioned earlier, our goal is to keep things super simple. Alright, let's move on. We can now start writing our program in the Program Blocks tab. The TI portal has already created, so organization block OB1 for us. The OB1 is the main program block in a Siemens PLC. If you want your PLC to do something, the OB1 is the starting point. This block is automatically executed by the PLC when device is in run mode. You can create simple programs directly with an OB1. Now my friends, we have to solve some small problems before we can start programming. We need two things. First, we need so-called PLC tags, which allows us to use inputs and outputs in the code. Second, we need to choose a programming language. These are the two topics we will cover in the next video. See you soon! Thank you so much for watching. If you are excited to dive deeper into PLC programming, visit my website at plccoach.com. See you in the next video.